end of the day, what does this mean for brands? It means a boatload, it means plenty. There's new ways that this young culture now looks at brands. Um, I showed you that one stat up there about people place too much importance on brands. I think that's really interesting, that resonated at the highest. But then, I think what's really interesting is this next piece. I will purchase a brand if it stands for something that I believe in. That's totally new stuff. Around 10, 15 years ago, this never even happened. You never thought, like, does this brand, you know, does Colgate stand in my eyes, you know? Is it behind, or that Chevy van that I'm gonna be, you know, if this van's a knocking, don't come a rocking. And that song, I love it, like, is it in line with my ethics and ideals? No, that never happened. This is a totally new player uh, in, in, uh, in, in terms of the way young people perceive brands. Now, if you get to that, then they will be loyal to you. A good majority of them will be loyal. And they still say, a, a minority now, 40% say, brands help me make purchase decisions and processes. It's part of it. And I also think this is really interesting too. A celebrity's endorsement of a brand may influence my opinion of that brand. Only 12% even agree with that. Of course, these are all aspirational, right? There's still one in 10 of us here will say advertising affects me, right? Everybody else, oh, advertising has nothing to do with anything. But it's interesting to see that. And also, there's new factors that are joining the decision-making matrix, you know? Um, ethics are really, really huge. And these numbers have jumped up dramatically in one year. They've all gone up around 10, 15% in the past year. Consider buying environmentally, all that kind of stuff is really interesting. This is good. Consider if the company is Canadian. So here in Canada, actually, we, compared to America, young people much more patriotic, much more nationalistic. In Canada, those number, in the States, those numbers are around 27, 28. Here in Canada, we're a little more raw, raw Canada. So that's interesting, you know. But here we go again. Consider the general values of the company you get involved with or buy from at 30%. Um, consider if an item was ethically manufactured, again, at 30%. These are the only criteria they use to get behind a brand or get behind any type of purchase, but they're joining the crowd. Functionality is still there. Cool cachet is still there. Uh, cost is huge, particularly for this uh, age set. But these new sets of ethics and ideals, because of all the, you know, Pervasive technology, pervasive information out there, a whole, you know, an, uh, basically infinite number of choices that they can make in terms of this product, tons of information. It's all affecting the, the way they look at anything, including brands. So the new normal of brands then is that all, A, you got to realize that all organizations are brands. And you have to stop thinking that you are exclusively in control of your brands. This just doesn't happen anymore. You know, it's like the holder, you know, the, the, the more you hold it in your hands, the sand flips through, it's that whole piece. This is what's happening. Good brands share themselves with their consumers or controls taken away. It's as simple as that. That's what we tell every single one of our clients, and it's about working with them. And if they don't like your message, they're just going to invent their own. Just like, you know, they, they'll hack around any sort of patch or they'll patch around any issue that's happening in, in the software land. Same thing's happening in the real software of their, of their brain in terms of things that they're affiliated with. If they don't like it, they will invent their own or they'll just walk away and tell everybody about it. And of course, control is also being uh, realized in an even greater way and it's driving new uh, business models. I've got, have you, have you guys heard about you know, the Ebbs Fleet United Club, the football club? It's consumer source. They basically got something like 10,000 uh, people in the town of Ebbs Fleet to pony up 100 pounds each and now they have their own football team that you know they own and they make decisions and they vote on the coach and if it was a shitty game then that coach is really in trouble and so on and so forth um, you know invokes a company out of California you know you know it's a the first community managed eco-friendly whatever I'm sick of all that kind of stuff but at the end of the day they own the thing you know and, and, and that's what we call you know the crowdsourcing company all that's happening as well and um, and of course this is playing out in the public sphere we, we, I'm not even going to go into some you know, thing about Obama, but yeah, he knows how to make this happen. And, and we've always heard about this term democratic renewal. You know, it was a long time, you know, I remember five, ten years ago when we started starting the company, we had all these different people from the Ontario government, you know, we're all about democratic renewal. At that point, they didn't do anything about it. They had no idea what it meant. They just knew that young people don't give a shit about democracy, or at least getting involved with politics. And, and, and they were trying to find a way to connect uh, with them. And it's funny, um, it, it always happens, and we do a lot of work with young, like really young kids when it comes down to uh, democratic renewal, and I love it. You, you tell a primary school, school kid um, about democracy and all that, it, all that it's about, and they're like, they buy right into it and everything. And this is a nine to 10 year old, and they go, well, how can I get involved? And first off, you tell them, well, you gotta wait till you're 18. They're like, whatever. And then you tell them, and once you're 18, once every four to five years, you go to a gym and you tick a box. And you know, they're like, 
God. You know, that's not what they want. What they want is a long-term, ongoing interactivity, referendas, all of that kind of stuff. That's where democracy is going to have to go, and a lot of uh, governments are now finally doing this. I have an example here, a uh, Facebook site that was uh, uh, created by young people in, in Ontario, Young Drivers Against New Ontario Laws. This, was, this is a crazy story. I don't know, is anybody acquainted with this story? Sorry, yeah, remember that for Ontario peeps, yo, all right. But, but, got it, the trillium. It's good weather there today. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, but basically it was Dalton and his gang had, had uh, tabled a bunch of different legislations around seatbelt stuff that everyone agreed with, but sort of in there, and this wasn't even a lot, it was just a tabled proposal. In there was this idea that um, some, some, some bylaw that basically if you're 16 years, if you're 18 years of age or younger, you could not have another person in a car that was 18 years of age or younger with you at any time, unless they were your family. So, so, you know, so these, kids, so these kids are going, okay, well, uh, thank you very much. So, so these kids are basically saying, you know, hey, if I've got ten friends and we all want to see a movie, does that mean we have to get into five cars to go see the movie? That's crazy. So anyway, long story short, they created a Facebook site around, around Within around a, a week, they had around 110,000 young people assailing this. The press was all over it, and Dalton and the crew said, yeah, that table proposal is gone. And, and that's where d democratic renewal is going to happen. I think that's really interesting. And in, just in terms of research itself and the way brands operate, the way organizations operate, um, really that's always been our mantra. Our, our mantra over at Youthography has always been um, getting the new consumer directly involved with whatever it is you're doing at the earliest possible juncture. That's now what's happening. Panels are where it's going. Creative advisory panels to run an ad. You know, young people making uh, content, young people creating products. That's where things are going. That's, that's, that's obviously what's happening. So just being a brand doesn't cut it anymore um, with younger consumers. A brand has to live its message in all that it does, and that's the stand for something uh, I believe in part. Um, these are the new perceptions, but these are perceptions that we've seen grow very, very rapidly in the past 10 years, and now they're really values, and we expect them to get stronger as young citizen consumers mature.